trailer. See if I can. I'm gonna put new wiring on, but I'm gonna see if I can use the old connections. And I'm having problems. Testing it. Yeah. We have light. That looks good. That means they work, so you don't have to replace those. So now you're testing this little light. Yep. That looks good too. Just got to clean up these connections here. They don't look too bad though. And that's from the light that's already in there, right? Yeah, that light said just plugs in and then this was for the side marker light at the back. So we'll have to uh, clean that up, plug it in and put some grease on it. And if it works, then we'll leave those lights in and it'll just run new wires. So what are you doing now? Oh, same thing I was doing before, wiring, put new wiring on this trailer. I mean specifically. Specifically, putting tape on the wire for the wiring on this trailer. And then I'm gonna, I extended the ground wire. Because it's very short from the harness. Because it was short, yeah. And I just used what I had, which was blue, so. Blue is close to green, right? White. White? I thought ground was green. Depends. On trailers, it's white. Oh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good you did. <laughs> All right, let me know when you're going to do something exciting again. <laughs> like this is exciting. <laughs> Almost. Looks like you have more work to do. That side. What's that side mean? That side means the passenger side. Or? Uh, running lights or brake lights, whichever. I don't know, they're both on. No, they should. Oh, yeah. No. It should be. I must have been crossing them up here. Hang on. My wire is afraid. Afraid of what? <laughs> Left. Oh, that's the other term for it. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. I don't know my left from my right anyway. Right? Left and right. Then dim, right? Dim, right. Yeah, yeah, running lights. What about those little side lights? Are they working when I got that on? That one is yes. And this one is yes. What did you do with that box? Huh? What did you do to it? Cutter. What happened to this box? So you're just putting that's what kind of oil is that? Just just straight motor oil. Give me a 
good painting. Stuff. Yeah, the, I ain't gonna clean it down to bare metal and paint it, that's for sure. So it's getting painted with oil. Now how long would that last, do you think? I don't know. If you get a good coat of dust on it, it lasts longer. <laughs> it sticks. Cutter, are you going to take a walk on the short trail? Take a long walk on the short trail? Take a long walk on the short trail. Oh. A short walk on a short trail. Alright, let's go, mister. There's nothing there. This is a water hauling trailer, by the way. It's strictly for that. You can put a water tote on it and uh, it's no water. Not for us, for somebody else. You don't have to, once this is oiled, you don't have to touch it. this before but I said ah it's a good time to try this. I've got my dump trail I'm gonna do it too. Because it's such so much surface rust on it that I'm gonna just do the exact same thing. The sides like this are all rusty and crusty and I just want to make it last as long as possible. For all those people out there who ever buy a dump trailer, do not buy a steel dump trailer. Spend the extra money and get it galvanized. Any trailer get galvanized. It's a lot, it's extra money, but this is what happens. I had a $8,000 dump trailer and it looked like this after two years. I think it would have cost me another maybe thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks to get it up the galvanized version. Lesson learned. This is yucky out there. Why? Oh it's snowing and it's cold. It's like it's snowing enough. It's snowing enough. Winter! What winter's like? paint on it so it's an awesome shape. <laughs> Does it look better? Oh yeah it looks much better. <laughs> it's got that wet look. It's eh? good yes it does. <laughs> it looks like it's been uh it looks like it's got a good coat of lacquer on it. Nice. Got a good coat of Walmart 10W30 on it. 30 lacquer. Cheapest oil you can buy. chilly out there today it's only one degree Celsius in the shop this morning and oh so I'll be wearing my jacket and my tube probably most of the time I'm out here last year sometime I was out walking in the woods and I found this old dead cedar tree that was laying on the ground so all the bark was off of it and everything and I saw it and I want to 
make these into shelf brackets. I've got several pieces that uh, I want to cut down and turn them into shelf brackets. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So what I ended up doing was just marking on here. I don't know how well you can see that, but cut it down the center and then there's going to be about an inch on either side for each of the branches. So that's how I'm going to start just by cutting down the center and then I'm going to work from there. In order to be able to do that, I need to have a straight edge to cut on. So I just put attach this with a couple of screws and parallel to my center cut mark and I'm just going to run this through the table saw. I don't know if you remember, but I used to have a giant cast iron table saw in here and I found that it's, the generator just wouldn't run it. We switched out the motor to a smaller motor, but then it didn't have enough power. And, uh, it ran, but as soon as you put a load on it, you could hear the generator laboring, so it just wasn't going to work. So I sold it and I'm going to uh, invest in a better uh, contractor saw because this one, it does the job, but I want something a little more a little more accurate than this, just a little better. So I'm going to invest in something. I'm probably going to get a DeWalt contractor saw and I'm going to build a table around it. So that's a whole other project for another day. But for now, we're just going to use the old Mastercraft, which has done great for us for this entire build. Like, I mean, we built our whole house using this saw. So I'm not going to complain about this old thing. That's for sure. It's been, it's been fantastic for us. But anyway, on to my project. Glasses on, because I can't see without them. Let's get this up. And just line that up with my mark. This is the easy one. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna get all the way through, but let's give it a try. through it's just like maybe a less than less than a centimeter half inch so I'll just finish that up with the saw and I think I need a new blade because I don't know if you saw that but that was smoking pretty good so this blade's been through a lot too now I'm gonna set this in here Just cut that off the rest of the way. That was more work than it should have been. Now, the hard part. Because I don't have all the fancy tools or anything, so I need to be able to cut off the excess that's on this edge now because I just cut them in half. So now I need to cut on this angle here to, you know, do some stuff. And I've come up with something I think would work for this piece. Every piece is different. So I have to uh, not be frustrated. That was not fun. I did not like that at all. Well, I just came back in from having lunch and uh, I had myself a nice egg salad sandwich and it's a piece of fish that Jeff caught. And I did manage to get these things done. Two of them are kind of a wash. I can't really use them because they're too thin. But I did manage to get two sets, so. Once they're up on the wall, put a shelf on it, and it will sit like this. 
and they'll just get attached to the wall and it'll be awesome. I think they're going to look pretty cool. So that's that. Pretty good. So there it is. One rustic shelf. This is just a rough piece of pine, so it's gonna need to be sanded, but I think that is gonna look pretty awesome hanging up somewhere in my house. <laughs>